So, you have a drone, but you want to get more out of it. Well, we're in the same boat, you and I. Here's a full guide on how to use the Litchi app and get more out of the flight range of your drone. Welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. I'm Nathan, and today we'll take a look at how to use the Litchi app to extend the range of your DJI drone. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the waypoint settings, the mission settings, how to set curved paths, and point of interest. When I first got my Mavic Air, I expected it to go far, at least as far as advertised. Unfortunately, that was never the case. But think about this. After this video, you'll be able to get your drone as far as you're asking it to. Just remember to have enough battery to get back. Okay, so let's hop into the app so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, so a quick introduction on Litchi. Litchi is an app that complements your drone and allows you to plan everything from its flight path to its gimbal rotation, what point of interest to focus on, and the speed between each waypoint you set for it. It does this all while telling your drone when to start and stop recording or take a picture. So, when you first open the app, you have to make sure you go into the waypoint option as that is probably the most interesting feature for you right now. What this will allow you to do is to tap on the map on your screen and with each tap, you will add a new waypoint. Each waypoint is a destination on the map that your drone will fly to. Waypoint one is where your drone will start and you can choose up to 99 waypoints to determine where your drone needs to fly to. Before even turning on the drone, I'm able to plan my course within the Litchi app, which is great for preserving battery. Setting waypoints is very straightforward, so let me dive into the settings and point of interest options. When you've created a path for your drone to follow, let's take a look at what is happening. In this case, I've set a course around Finn's Beach Club here in Bali. Each waypoint gets a number assigned in a purple indicator. Above that, you'll see a number that shows you the altitude your drone will be flying at, and a blue subtle paper airplane icon that shows you the direction the front of your drone will point at when flying past this waypoint. You will also see a yellow line that indicates the course your drone will fly on. When you click on the waypoint, a settings menu will open up. You'll get a couple of options and I'll quickly go over them. Then I'll continue on to how to adjust the curvature of the turn that your drone will make when passing the selected waypoint. First off, in the top left corner, we see a waypoint minus and a waypoint plus indicator. This allows you to remove the selected waypoint or add a new waypoint after the one you've selected. This is especially useful if you don't want to add a waypoint at the end of your path, but rather in the middle of your path. Next off, you have two sliders, altitude and speed. These do exactly what they say. Determine the altitude and speed of your drone. The default speed of your drone is determined in the mission settings though. But if you want a customized speed at a certain waypoint, this is where you decide that. The next slider is the curvature slider. At first, it will be grayed out and you can't adjust it. That's because we'll have to go in the global mission settings first, but I'll get back to that later. After the curvature slider, you see the heading slider. This will change the heading of your drone if you want to change this one, you'll see the blue paper airplane point to a different heading. This is great if you want to change where your gimbal will be pointing at. Below that, you see another rotation option. Also pretty straightforward. This one determines what direction your drone will rotate to when you pass a certain waypoint. Next up, you have the point of interest and gimbal pitch mode. You can change those if you've not set a point of interest. So let's quickly get out of the waypoint settings menu for now and press the yellow plus icon to turn on point of interest mode. What this does is it allows you to set a point of interest on the map instead of a new waypoint. This will automatically set each waypoint heading to the closest point of interest. If you only set one point of interest, each waypoint will set its heading toward that point of interest. In this case, point of interest number one. Let's turn off point of interest mode by pressing the button again, and let's click on one of the waypoints to continue going over the waypoint menu settings. When we scroll back down to the point of interest option, we now see a number appear. 
this will automatically be the number corresponding to the point of interest closest to that waypoint. So in this case, since we've only set one point of interest, it will be the number one. Now we have some options in the gimbal pitch mode. Disabled, focus point of interest, or interpolate. This is what those options mean. Disables means that you'll manually choose the direction of your gimbal with the controller of your drone. Focus point of interest means that the gimbal will automatically pitch towards the point of interest your waypoint is set to look at. And interpolate means that it will smoothly move towards the position of the next gimbal pitch mode, which means that you need to manually set a gimbal pitch rotation for at least two waypoints in order for this to work. Below the gimbal pitch mode, we have the actions. And these are also very straightforward. When you click the plus button, it will show you a couple of options you can choose from. One thing to mention before we get into this is that these will not work when you have curvatures turned on in your mission settings, because the drone won't actually cross the exact location you've set for your waypoint since you've chosen to curve the course the drone is taking. That being said, if you don't use curves, here's what each option can and will do. Stay for will allow you to have your drone wait at that certain waypoint for a couple of seconds, up to 32 seconds. Take photo will take a picture, but only if your drone stopped recording video. So if you've set a start recording action, make sure to set a stop recording action before setting a take photo action. The next option is to rotate the aircraft to a certain heading. And the last option is to tilt the camera to a certain position with minus 90 degrees being completely down and zero degrees being straight ahead. When we close the action menu, there's one last thing to note in the waypoint settings menu, and that's the left and right arrow at the bottom of the menu. These will allow you to go to the next or previous waypoint that you've set. Now let's close the menu and go to the missions settings menu. This is an important one, as it determines the global speed, maximum speed, whether or not you have curved turns turned on or off, and the action your drone will take when it reaches its last waypoint. The first option is just that, finish action. This option allows you to choose whether your drone returns home, lands, goes back to waypoint one, or flies the set path back in reverse. The second option is the one we need to turn on to change the straight path mode into the curved turns mode. The next two sliders are quite important. They both determine the speed of your drone. The first one determines the global speed of your drone, if you did not select a custom speed for your waypoints, meaning that your drone will fly at that exact speed for each waypoint that does not have a custom speed assigned to it. The second slider determines the max flight speed. This is basically how fast you allow your drone to fly if you're manually controlling the speed throttle on your drone remote. This can be useful if you want to manually speed up and down your drone when it's flying on a certain course. Pushing the throttle full speed will not allow your drone to fly any faster than the max flight speed you've determined in the mission settings. Below that, you can find the default curve size, which is the default curvature your drone will make when it flies from one waypoint to another. This is great if you want each curve to be equally large. And lastly, you have the default gimbal pitch mode and rotation direction. Depending on your flight need, you can select disabled focused point of interest and interpolate for the gimbal pitch mode and rotation direction can be set to managed or manual. That's it for the settings. Now that you know all there is to know, let's take a look at how the curvature shows itself in the Litchi app when actually setting a global curvature of say 50%. I've cleared all the waypoints and I will create a new flight path for the drone to follow. Now, because of the curvature being 50%, the actual flight path will look the same aside from these new blue curved lines that show the actual curved path the drone will run on. This also explains why actions aren't possible in this mode, because the drone doesn't actually pass by the exact location of the set waypoint, so it never receives the order to perform a set action. Now that you know how to set curved lines, get your drone to follow a set path, change the speed and set your actions, it's time for a demonstration. I'll show you what's going on on screen when the drone is following the flight path. Before we start the mission, press the floppy disk icon that allows you to save the mission. 
This is important because you don't want to redo all your actions should the app not save your mission. Now that that's done, we'll press the play button and the mission will get uploaded to your drone. This means that even when you lose connection with your drone, it will still remember its mission and fly out the course you've set for it. In this bit, it's important that you make sure the drone returns to home or that you set an extra waypoint back to your original location so that the drone flies back into your control range. When you press play and confirm, you'll see the drone head to its first waypoint. What I like to do is to manually move it there so I know it's in the right place already and won't hit any obstacles on its way there. Obstacle avoidance is still active though, but better safe than sorry. Next, when it starts following the set waypoints, you will see a few options on your screen. The square is to stop the mission entirely. The pause button will give you manual control and pause its mission, but you can easily unpause it and it'll just continue from where you left off. I know it's a lot of information, but I'm confident that now you'll know enough about the Litchi app to get started with your own missions. That's it for Wisdom Wednesday. If you want to know more about Litchi, let us know in the comments as there's still a lot more to explore. But for now, I'll try and keep Wisdom Wednesday a bit shorter and lighter in the future, but make sure to like, comment and subscribe to help our channel grow and sustain our travels. To follow our adventures, also make sure to find us on Instagram by looking for Nathan and Lawrence or Nathan and Lawrence videos. That's it for today, but see you soon and see you later.